everybody, I'm Pia from Stitches and Scraps and I just wanted to show you what I'm working on today. Um, I have been scrapbooking a page from a baby shower from back in 2015 for one of my friends. Um, you can see I've got some placeholders where I plan to put some pictures. Um, and the theme for this baby shower was Peter Rabbit. And I kind of wanted to embellish this page with a couple of little carrots so I thought I would quill them. This was my first attempt I'm at using the quilling comb. This was my carrot. It's a little big for what I want, so I'm going to make another one, and I thought I would make it with you. This will be literally the second time I've ever used a quilling comb, so bear with me. This is the quilling comb we're talking about. This is from Quilled Creations. So the first thing that I need is a 12 inch piece of orange um, paper. So I'm going to grab, there's my orange. Oh, it's, I think it's my last one. I'm going to grab my orange paper and then I'll need a green piece for the uh, leaf. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that one now too. Okay. Oops. So there I've got an orange one and a green one. So let's start with the easy one, which is the orange one for the carrot. I'm not going to use quite all of it, but I'm going to use most of it because this was using all of one piece and I just felt like it was a little bit too big. So we're going to start right here at the top and I always like to crimp. Listen to me, I always like, this is my second time doing this. So I've decided I like to crimp the top and you put it over the, the first tine and then I'm going to wrap it over not in that one. I'm going to wrap it over the next time and then bring it up over this one. Okay, where it comes up over the top, I need to add a little bit of glue. And I had a nice fancy glue bottle that, that didn't put too much glue on. I don't know where it is, so I'm using just uh, cheap school glue from the local drugstore. So I fold this over the top and oop, this is the hardest part for me. Get it back where it was. Okay. Fold this over the top and kind of pinch it in place till it locks. Once you have this section done, then the rest of them go pretty easy. Okay. So now that one's locked in place and I'm going to fold it back over the back of the comb. Go into the next line and be careful not to twist your paper at the back when you do this. It should be all nice and straight. So go into the next line and dab a little more glue on the top. Don't want a lot of glue, so I'm kind of like letting a bead out and then sucking it back up as I do it to get just just that tiniest little bit of glue on there. So there's the next wrap. And a couple more. Another tiny dot of glue. I think I want one more and then I might stop because that's about the size that I want my carrot to be. It'll get a little bit shorter when we take it off and puff it up a bit, but not all that much shorter. So let me see. Yeah, maybe just one more. And again, be very careful not to let the the paper twist at the back and, and kink. Okay, that looks good. So I'm going to cut it off here. And I actually like to tear the paper because it leaves kind of a, a softer edge that um, blends in better and isn't as noticeable as when you cut it. When you cut it, it leaves a very harsh edge. And that I feel is much more visible, whereas this, the torn ends kind of just float right into the paper underneath it and you hardly see it. 
There we go, see? You can hardly see the join. So now give that a second to dry, and then we just take it off. And this is basically our carrot, and you can see that this is the top where the loop started. So I'm gonna hold that still for a minute and pinch the bottom to get a nice point. Now I wanna fluff this top part up a little bit, and at each one of these layers, I'm kind of fluffing a little and pull apart the pieces a little bit, just kind of shape it into carrot shape, um, whatever carrot shape looks like to you. I think I want the top a little bit flatter. There we go. And then I give it a little bit of a curve. Yeah, maybe even flatter on the top. Yeah, that's a good shape for me. And then I give it a little bit of a curve. And that is my carrot. Now when I actually glue this to the paper, what I'm gonna do is put a little glue on a scrap piece of paper, dip this into the glue like this uh, so that the whole side at the bottom gets covered and then stick it to the paper. So once it's on the paper, it will hold its shape. So that is the carrot. And now I wanna do the, that's not the right uh, paper, here it is. Now I wanna do the leaf on top. And the leaf is gonna be much smaller. I'm not gonna use the whole, the whole thing of paper here. But this one starts out much easier, too, because I'm not making quite as small of a loop at the beginning. So I'm actually going to fold it over quite a bit more. It's almost over the second time. And I'm going to make this loop as long as I want the stem to be. Now, in this case, I had made the stem all the way down to this loop, but I wanted a little bit... Sorry, I think I went to that loop. Let me try that again. Yeah, I had made the stem all the way down to that time. So this time I'm going to make it a little shorter. I'm going to go down to this one. And there are handy dandy numbers here if you remember to look at them. So I'm going around the number five and coming back up. This is just like when we started the carrot. I'm going to put a little glue on here. Ooh, too much, too much, too much. Okay, come back up and squeeze that in place there. Trying to keep it straight so that I don't get the overlap. And then once I've got that held in place, it should stick. And now we've got our first loop. Now to make this kind of jagged, uh, leafy look, I'm going to first come to this side. Now notice this is to the side of this loop. It's not over it like what we were doing before. So I first come to this side and I'm one, I'm two times actually shorter. I think I'm going to go one time shorter. One time shorter and then back over the end. Okay. Now then for the next one, I'm going to take my end here and stick it up in here and come in on this side. This is much easier to do when you're not working around a camera. Okay. Come on. Okay. This end is a little bent. There we go. That should make it easier. Oh, there. Okay, and again, I wanna make sure I haven't twisted the paper here. See how it's a little twisted? I wanna make sure the paper's coming through nice and flat, otherwise I'm gonna have a kinky little problem at the back here. So get it all going in the right direction. And be gentle, you don't wanna make kinks or folds in your paper. So now it's come up on this side. And I put a little dot here. And I actually like the three better than I like the five. Here I did the five, and I think I kind of like the three better. Let me see what that looks like. That's actually a little too big, isn't it? You know what? I'm going to take this off, and I'm going to start over. But there's my three, and that feels a little bit, a little bit big. So I'm going to take this off. I'm going to go here. Sorry. I'm going to go here, fold the end over, and last time I went to the five, I felt it was a little big, so this time I'm going to go to the four. So I'm going to the four, put a dot of glue on top here. But yeah, I think I definitely do like the, th the three folds better than the five, so I'm going to stick with the three folds for this one. There's one. Mm 
And sometimes it takes a little trial and error with this. You just gotta see what looks good to you. Um, that's what it's all about. So then I'm gonna come in. Oop, I didn't quite let that dry enough, I think. Let's get that nice and even. There we go. There we go. Nice and even. Let it dry. And then come in here and up over the top. And I'm kind of sliding all over the place here, aren't I? All right. Let's put another dot of, well, let's get this up through here first. Bring it up through here. Put another dot of glue on here. And bring it back over. All right, all done. Rip off the back and glue that little bit down so that it's out of the way. Okay, once that's had a second to hold, now I can pull it off, and that seems like a much better size to me. So there we go, there's my little carrot. So now I'm going to glue this carrot onto the, the paper, and where I actually want it, because I don't want to ruin the um, invitation the top part of this page is the invitation and I don't want to get that messed up so I'm going to pull that out of this corner I've got a photo corner in there and I'm going to kind of take it out of the way for a little bit and I'm going to place this right on top of the photo corner like this so that it's actually glued to the photo corner and not to the actual invitation so to do that I need a scrap piece of this is a piece of cardboard off of something I don't remember what it's a little sticky on one side, so I'm going to put a little glue on it, swirl it around, and get my handy dandy tweezers so I don't get my hands all messy. There we go. I'm going to pick this up and just swirl it around a little bit in the glue to get just enough glue on it for it to hold. So now that back edge is all gluey. And I put this down here and press very gently. You don't want to squish the paper. So you press until it's stuck. Now here I can do a last little bit of shaping if I want to before it's fully stuck. Once it's stuck, that's the shape it's going to be. So I think that looks good to me. Let's hold that there for a second. Oh, maybe I didn't get quite enough glue on it. Let's try this again. It up, put a little more glue on it, and stick it back down. I think it's holding its shape pretty well though. Okay, that looks good. Let's get this piece on. This piece is gonna stick a little bit more easily because it's got a nice solid back. So I just swirl that around in there. And stick that right there. And what I like is that this photo corner kind of lifts it a bit. So this side is lower than this side, which brings it up to the level of the, the um, carrot there, which I really like. So I'm just gonna kind of use my tweezers in between here so I'm not squishing it. Use my tweezers to get that down on there. And get it perfectly in position. And then I'm gonna give that a good maybe 15 minutes to dry solid before I check it. If it's still loose when I check it, then I will put some more glue on it. The other thing that I can do is I want to not use my fingers because I don't want to squish anything. So I use my little pokey tool here. I don't know what it's called, but I call it the pokey tool. So I'm going to hold this one in place. OK, 
Okay, and then I'm gonna separate these just slightly to give myself a little bit more, a little bit more shape to this. Okay. There we go. I like that, I think. It won't go very, very far because it's kind of been positioned by the, the tines of the quilling comb, but you can do a little bit of modification while you're gluing it. Okay, got a little sliding going on. And there it is. There's my carrot. How does it look? Do you guys like it? It's off a little bit here. Twist it a little more. There, and I could literally fuss with this until the glue dries. I'm I'm really bad about that. I will keep fussing and playing and adjusting, and I'm sure others of you are just like me on that. But I think that's that's pretty good. Um, so once the glue dries, I'll go ahead and put my invitation back in, and I'll have my little carrot embellishment.